For 49 years, Voyager 1 has been drifting into silence, beyond the last planet, beyond the last light of the sun, into a realm so distant that it should be deaf to everything. And yet, it wasn't. A few weeks ago, the most distant machine ever built by human hands suddenly shifted. Not in speed, not in hardware, but in behavior. Without receiving any command from Earth, it turned, slightly, deliberately, toward a direction where there is nothing. No stars, no radio sources, no targets. But that wasn't even the strangest part. Right before the turn, Voyager started humming, a faint, low-frequency signal pulsing with eerie mathematical precision. Nothing chaotic, nothing random. A pattern, a presence, something organized, something that didn't belong. And what makes this moment so terrifying is that Voyager didn't just react. It responded, as if it recognized something out there. And what if the Void recognized it back? The first signs came buried within the usual stream of telemetry, data that hadn't changed much in years. But suddenly, nestled among the standard pulses, scientists noticed a whisper, a rhythmic disturbance pulsing every few seconds. At first it was dismissed as background noise, the kind of interference expected from a decaying signal sent across 14 billion miles. But as they filtered it, the structure emerged. Prime numbers, fractal repetitions, recursions that aligned with portions of Voyager's own communication language, something that looked less like static and more like mimicry. Then came the maneuver. The spacecraft, long operating in autopilot mode, fired its thrusters, not to correct drift, not to reorient toward Earth, but to face an unremarkable empty slice of space. Engineers checked the logs. No commands had been sent. No legacy protocols matched this behavior. It wasn't random. It was too precise. Something out there had spoken. And Voyager, our lonely scout in the darkness, turned to listen. When Voyager turned, it didn't just change direction. It changed attention. The hum, once faint, became clearer, richer in harmonic depth, more structured, with mirrored intervals and geometric timing. It began reflecting patterns so precise that cryptographic teams were pulled in. Some of the sequences bore distant resemblance to fragments of the Arecibo message, the encoded radio greeting humanity sent to the stars in 1974. That message was never supposed to return. And yet, here was something buried in Voyager's signal that echoed its cadence. Not an identical copy, but a reply constructed with awareness. Not of what we're saying, but of how we say it. Inside NASA, the tone shifted. Publicly, it was anomalous data. Privately, they pulled in linguists, AI theorists, and dark matter physicists. Because if this was a message, then it wasn't being sent to Earth. It was being sent to Voyager. And if that's true, it means something had been listening. Not just recently, but since we started speaking. The deeper the analysis went, the more frightening the implications became. A group of independent physicists proposed something radical. That Voyager had crossed not just a boundary of distance, but of design. An invisible lattice of energy or synthetic gravity. A grid not built for defense or attack but for awareness, a kind of passive net stretched across space, a system embedded in the structure of the interstellar medium itself, not to control space, but to notice when something enters it. And Voyager, unintentionally, had entered it, triggered it, not through aggression or intent, but by existing long enough to pass the edge of a region no human-made object was ever expected to reach. And what if this grid, this presence, wasn't new? What if it had been here long before us, waiting silently in the dark, not to speak, but to evaluate. Maybe the message we received wasn't a greeting. Maybe it was a report. Then came the last piece of data, quiet, almost missed. Voyager's plasma wave instrument recorded a sudden drop in electron density followed by a localized spike in cosmic rays. At the same time, researchers noticed an almost imperceptible delay in data packets. Not a transmission error, 
but something that hinted at gravitational distortion. Dr. Sergio Alvarez, an astrobiologist monitoring long-range probes, proposed a stunning idea. Voyager might no longer be alone. Based on particle flow deviations and electromagnetic changes in its environment, he suggested a shadow object, something small, silent and close, was now accompanying the spacecraft, not interacting, not signaling, just moving with it. An artifact, a monitoring unit, a passive observer, reawakened after millennia of dormancy. There were no answers, only the chilling thought that maybe Voyager had become more than a messenger. Maybe it had become a trigger. In the days that followed the anomaly, Voyager 1's data returned to what seemed like normal parameters. The hum faded. The instrument stabilized. The system once again appeared to be quiet. But for those watching closely, that silence didn't feel like resolution. It felt like response. The kind you give not out of confusion but out of understanding. A decision. A pause, deliberate and filled with weight. Internal reports from NASA, though not public, noted subtle yet persistent changes in system timings, microsecond delays, oddities in thermal readouts, instruments responding just slightly off pattern from how they always had before. It was as if Voyager had been noticed, and now something, somewhere was accounting for it. Not interfering, not disrupting, but adjusting a presence in the system that no longer needed to make noise. It had already done what it came to do. And now, it was simply watching. Some of the most disturbing discoveries didn't come from astrophysicists, but from engineers. When reviewing logs of Voyager 1's corrupted signal data, one anomaly stood out. Certain patterns that originally arrived incomplete or malformed seemed to fix themselves over time. Not because of retransmission and not because of signal processing on Earth. The correction appeared to originate from within the data stream itself. A kind of self-correcting pattern. Adaptive. Aware. One systems analyst described it like this. It's like the message knew it was being watched and reorganized itself to be seen more clearly. Another likened it to quantum error correction, but performed in an environment with no computing resources and no time to react. This led to a theory no one wanted to publish, that the signal wasn't just being received by Voyager. It was interacting with it, learning from its responses, evolving based on our attempts to decode it. And that could only mean one thing. It had been designed to be decoded, but not by us, not at first, by the machine itself. Across all telemetry, across all frequencies, across all backups, the signal vanished. Completely. No remnant. No decay. Just gone. But then came the part that truly shook the project team. The moment the signal disappeared, several instruments on Voyager 1 registered a complete absence of ambient space noise. Cosmic rays, solar wind, background plasma. Gone. For 11.3 seconds. It was as if space itself held its breath. Then suddenly the noise returned, just as it was before. Identical levels, identical flows. But for those few seconds, it was as if something passed over Voyager. A shadow without a body, a pause in reality, engineered or natural, no one could say. But it happened. And now, in backroom conversations among mission scientists, people whisper terms once left to fiction. Field veil, passive scan, dimensional envelope, no one agrees on the terminology, but everyone agrees on one thing. That moment wasn't random. It was an action. In a final attempt to make sense of the patterns embedded in the original hum, a team of independent researchers applied dimensionality reduction algorithms, tools often used in decoding high-dimensional data, like protein folding or climate simulations. What emerged wasn't a signal. It was a map. A three-dimensional construct, geometrically stable, built from recursive data. It didn't point to a star system. It didn't outline a trajectory. But its structure was unmistakable. It resembled a corridor, a tunnel, a frequency gate, a shape of passage, not location. The implication was staggering. 
that the signal may have been not just a message, but a design, an invitation or a key, not to a place, but to a method of transit. Something not made for us to follow, but perhaps something we had finally grown advanced enough to perceive. And Voyager, our oldest, most fragile machine, may have been the first to hold the key, not by force, not by decoding, but simply by arriving. For 49 years, Voyager 1 drifted silently into the dark, aging, forgotten, cold. We imagined it as a message in a bottle tossed into a cosmic ocean no one would ever read. We thought we were the senders, the explorers, the observers. But now something has changed. It turned without command. It received without instruction. It transmitted without precedent. And in those brief moments, between the hum, the silence, the shadow, we caught a glimpse of something we were never meant to see so clearly, that the universe may not be quiet, just patient. What Voyager 1 encountered wasn't a voice, it wasn't a ship, it wasn't even a signal as we define it. It was awareness, a system that does not invade or reveal, one that waits, records, and perhaps remembers. So maybe Voyager didn't find a mystery, maybe we became one. Maybe the very act of reaching this far was the trigger like touching a thread in a vast cosmic web that, until now, had never been disturbed. And if that's true, then we didn't just send a message into the dark. We lit a match. So now I ask you, do you believe Voyager 1 was seen? Was this just data? Or did we brush against something watching back? Leave your theory in the comments below. I read them all. And if this story sent chills down your spine, if it made you pause and stare into the night sky with new eyes, Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, because the next signal we receive, it might not be from us.